Well, I'm a little bit apprehensive about transfer deadline day. There's still interest around some of our stars, particularly Lewis Dunk. So is anyone going to be taken away from our squad? Let's go and find out, as well as get in our first European draw. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 10 of Building Brighton with me, Daniel. We are back today to face David Moyes' Aston Villa side. As we've started the Premier League season pretty decently. It's 7th v 8th. It's two sides looking to chase down that top six. And in addition, we're going to find our first Europa League draw. And of course, go through transfer deadline day. Lots of interest in some of our stars. I'm hoping it will be a quiet day. But of course, for entertainment value, you probably want to see me losing a superstar. If you want to find out if we do and you are enjoying the series, then please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content. A reminder, from now until the end of the season, there will be an episode every weekday from this series. It should take us through to the beta. We had our save announcements yesterday for FM23. You can find those and other key playlists up in the eye above. Come and join us on Twitch where we're playing F1 Manager most mornings, including tomorrow. And then down in the description below, you can find links to all the other platforms and ways to support the channel. Thank you so much for your incredible support. As we are back with four days left in the transfer window. Five technically because we're back a day early. We've got a Europa League draw later today. The first news, as you can see at the top of the screen, Alexis McAllister, one of the stars, he's picked up a knock and is out injured. And that might be more crucial than it looks, because if I show you the recent performances, he's been pivotal. You were with me for the Community Shield defeat, a disappointing game, but we competed with a top side. I don't think the same can be said against United, where it was a very comfortable win. United got two first half goals. We came back into it a bit. But I think I'd be lying if I said we looked like getting a result at any point. However, we've played against two of the sides expected to be out of that top six or seven now. And we've beaten them both 2-0. And the reason I say McAllister's injury is important is because against Wolves, he was the match winner. Two goals for him. Second one, delightful dinked finish from 20 yards. And he's almost catching Addy Amy in terms of current ability now too. A 2-0 win at Brentford as Karim got off the mark for the league season. And McAllister again wrapped up the victory with the third goal of the season for him. He will miss this one though and probably the cup tie too. Hopefully he's back after the international break for a big run of games up until the World Cup. Our squad is going to be tested through domestic games and through Europe. So I think the best thing to do is go and find out who we're facing in that one. The Europa League draw is coming up next. and I don't think we're going to be seeded near the top. Well, this is the moment we've been waiting for since that amazing FA Cup final, where thankfully we got Spurs who just don't like winning trophies. Let's go and get to the group stage draw. We're seeded third for it. So as long as we don't get a big boy in pot two, I think we might be all right because there's not going to be many big teams in pot four, you wouldn't have thought. There's only one way to find out though. Let's draw the first two sets of teams and see which group we want to be in. Well, here we go. And with respect to them, I think groups B and F are considerably weaker than the rest. Young Boys and Dinamo Kiev in B, Slavia Prague and Ghent in F, I'd argue probably the weakest. There are some other groups though. I know we can't be in the Manchester United one. But if you look at the likes of Dortmund, yes, a great side, but then Rapid Vienna may be a winnable game. The same perhaps for Napoli and Red Star. So there are opportunities for us in some of these pots. There are some other big teams in pot three as well. It's got to be said, the likes of Lille from France, Galatasaray, Michelin behind my head. We'll know from our other save with Viborg. And in pot four, the team to avoid is Getafe without doubt. So let's get through and see which group we're in. Please not group A. It looks the group of death. Wolfsburg and Atletico Madrid, just avoid it. Michelin in there. Group B, I wouldn't mind. It's Rosenborg. We can't be in C. D is a bit of a mixed bag because Milan are great. E, the same with Dortmund. This is the one I want. If you give me this, I'd be confident we get through just based on those two. It's Luda Goretz, which means we're either with Benfica and Copenhagen or Napoli and Rangers. I thought we'd seen the back of Copenhagen after the last Viborg video. Have we? Yes, we have. We are in a group with Scottish side Rangers and Napoli. So if Goldson's still there, that'll be a bit of a reunion. And Balogun if he's still there in game as well. But you know what? Rangers is winnable. Napoli are a great side. But Rangers is winnable. It's all about pot four now. So let's draw the first seven out and see who we're facing. 
Well, I was trying to leave a little suspense with two to go, but we've actually got our answer because the two teams left are Aberdeen and Dnipro, and Aberdeen can't be in a group with Rangers. So we will be facing the Ukrainian side in Pot H. It's a group we can get through in, and it's a group we can get third in. It's not the easiest, and we might not be able to rotate as much as we'd like, but I'd be disappointed if we're not at least in Europa Conference after Christmas. And that arguably gives us a better chance at a trophy. So let's go and aim for third place in the Europa League group. We'll be back in a minute for Aston Villa before heading to deadline day. Kickoff time and fitness test galore. But injuries are the big concern. McAllister has been the problem one. We've had to rest Feltman from training to try and get him fit for this week. And the two wing-backs not in the best shape either. Kukure has had three injuries already this year. So as we go into the Aston Villa game, yes, we've had two good wins. Yes, we're in pretty good nick. But this could be a very tricky afternoon. They've got a great side on paper. They're developing really well. They've only brought in a couple of players in the summer, but they've managed to hold on to virtually everyone. And as a result, they're in really good nick. But after two clean sheets in a row, I'm grateful that the fullback five is just about fit. The issue is McAllister, and that means that Zakarian today has got a real chance to come to the party. He looks like a superstar on paper, or can he start to prove it? There's the big question. We had lots of injuries last week, so Flozek will come back on the bench. Kukurea will come back into the team with March on the bench. We'll sort the rest of the subs out now. We'll be back in a minute to run through it. And there we go then. Two changes to the start in 11. Is Kukurea back in? On the left-hand side for March, Zakarian in for the injured McAllister. Big shoes to fill there. The rest of the team, though. Sanchez in goal. We're sticking with him for now. Veltman, Dunk and Webster. Will it be Dunk's last game here? Tottenham still sniffing around. Lots of media stuff coming out. Conte getting involved himself now. Lamptey and Kukurea are the wing-backs with Berger settling in nicely alongside Basuma in centre mid. Zakarian and Trossard, the two number 10s. And Adi Amy, fresh from his first goal of the season, is up front and looking for trouble today. Let's go and submit the team, get into the big match. Hopefully he can start to find his goal-scoring form and Zakarian can live up to McAllister's ability. Well, David Moyes in charge of Villa and it is an 11 players that were all there at the start of the game, either at the club or out on loan. On the bench, not many new boys either. Couple coming back from loan. Vincent Janssen, one that joined Bergstrom as well. But the rest of it is very familiar. So let's get through the dressing room. Let's tell the lads to keep it up. Go how you went last game and we'll be fine. We're going to be positive. We're going to be on the front foot. And hopefully we're going to add three more points. Well, back with eight minutes on the clock, and here come Villa, menacing down the right with Leon Bailey. Cutting in from that side, giving Kukurea early problems. Down to Danny Ings, it's a good effort. And it was destined for the top corner until Robert Sanchez intervened. Levakovic played well in that community shield, but Sanchez is holding his own so far. Of course, we're going to have to pick one for the league, one for Europe and Cups. As Trezeguet's into the box, beats his man easy. Good block in the end. Who was that? I think it was Sander Berger back there. It's a corner kick anyway. Going to be taken again by Buendia. A lot of early pressure on us. Basuma heads away at the front post. Can Adi Amy counter? We're not going to find out. Tottenham ahead at West Brom. The only early goal. We wouldn't mind getting one ourselves. But at the moment, Villa look more likely. We're back with 10 to half time. And Lewis Dunk, the wanted man, is playing out from the back. And maybe doing Spurs a favour here by making mistakes and trying to push down his own value. Trezeguet on the left. Back to McGinn. Good challenge, Sander Berger. Feltman's clearance blocked. That is one of the worst goals we've let in in my entire time at Brighton from open play. We have been very solid defensively when defending positions like that for the most part. And that is absolutely awful. A mistake to give the ball away. A mistake to allow the cross in. And a mistake to not clear it. 1-0 down at half time. Based on the stats, you'd think it's a smash and grab. We're going to tell the lads we're not happy because the way we conceded is poor. We've got most motivated. But we're not creating chances. And that's the difference without McAllister. I wonder which subs we're going to go for first. I might even gamble on two up front. We've had that weird glitch again on the latest score screen there. It said 1-1, Kukurea 47th minute. Definitely didn't happen. But on the right-hand side, we've got it with Lamptey. It's a glitch we've seen three or four times this year in episodes. As Berger gets the ball to Trossard, Kukurea overlapping. Maybe he can assist one into Adeyemi. It's a good block from Mings. He's just not quite found his touch this year yet. And he's not really had much service for the most part. As Trossard into Berger, it's saved to Zakarian. I did not expect him 
to pop up with a header to score a goal. Sander Berger causing chaos from set pieces is part of the reason we opted for him in the middle. But Zakarian, five foot what? Oh, he's six foot one in fairness. I take it back. Zakarian, you are a lifesaver. And with just under 25 to go, I'm going to think about changes in a minute. And I'm almost getting to the stage now where I think, do I go Hlozek for Adi Amy? Because he's that far out of form. I know he scored last game, but it's his only one. And he's not rising to the season so far. As Webster finds Dunk, do not give it away again. Just give us the lead. Calm us down. Veltman goes wide to Lamptey. Inside to Zakarian. Lovely football. Great switch to Kukurea, who's unmarked. Gets into the box. Cash closes him. Across to Adi Amy. Why did I doubt the man? I'm sorry, Karim. I'm sorry. I knew you were going to score. 2-1, he's staying on. That's a brilliant goal as well. First tired legs of the day. Tarek Lamptey on the right-hand side. But lo and behold, we've got a proper sub this year. Kelvin comes on. Happened in most games, to be honest. And he's helped to shore things up. So we're going to leave him for five more minutes. And then we'll look at the last two. I'm looking in midfield at Berger and Basuma. Maybe someone we've got to protect. Basuma will be travelling a long way for international duty. Trossard in the tent. He's looking a little bit fatigued. So we'll give it five more. I'm not worried about big runouts at the minute. Because everyone's going to get their chance once we go to two a week. As Trossard puts the corner into the back post to Berger. And he's straight at Martinez again. But from set pieces. That boy's made such a difference. You can see it every single time. Trezeguet on the left. Goes back to target. Chips downfield. Kelvin's there. Lovely play to mop up and find Veltman. Basuma gives it to Berger and Trossard. Through to Adi Amy. Can he add to his tally? Oh, that's a glorious goal. Glorious strike. 35, 40 yards out. 30 is not enough from the commentary there. Adi Amy makes it 3-1. That is an absolutely super goal. We're going to bring on Taylor Richards for the tyre Trossard. And then in midfield, I've only really got Jack of Murder. So do I maybe drop back someone like Klozek? Do I bring on another centre-half? I think I'm going to protect Kukurea. And I know it seems a silly sub, but he's got injured late on in nearly every game he started. So Solly March will come on for him. And for 10 minutes, we'll just try and see things out. Hopefully protect people from injuries and have a full complement after the internationals. Well, we've made hard work of this, but with a minute and a half plus stoppages to go, we're 3-1 up, we're playing out confidently from the back. And we're looking really good as Zakarian flicks on. Doesn't quite get through. We don't want a grandstand finish here. Be careful, Veltman. Back to Sanchez, who clears long. Be very surprised as well if Adi Amy's not a late winner of goal of the month there. Because that was a fabulous strike. As Martinez plays long downfield. Villa going gung-ho. Going attacking. Going long. But Basuma intercepts for Kelvin. And Zakarian through to Adi Amy. I've doubted him. And now he scored a hat-trick. He's made me look so, so silly. Zakarian adds an assist to his goal. He's been fabulous too. But Karim Amy, 23 minutes ago, I was about to take him off. Now he's got a hat-trick and won us the game. Do not doubt that man at all. As Target comes down the left-hand side, I'd like to not concede again, ideally. As Veltman intercepts and clears long. Big ball down the right. Mings will get there. And I might just drop to balanced in a minute. Try and shore things up. Make sure we don't concede again. Goal difference could be crucial this year as Konza comes forward. Completely unmarked. I'm not happy with that. When Dia threw to Ings, that's frustrating. Thankfully, it's over the bar. Should have scored. Sanchez covered it. It's 4-1. Probably flatters us slightly. And I just saw Leicester beat Manchester United. Finished in the top four last season, don't forget. Leicester, I'm pretty sure, are in the Champions League. But we've played really well. We've deservedly won. Yes, four is a little bit of a stretch. But with Addy Amy, any scoreline is possible. Here it is, transfer deadline day. There is one player I am keen on signing, and it's the one below us. He's just been transfer listed. He's on a tiny wage, and he's agreeing to join us for a pretty minute one. That is Oral Mangala, a 24-year-old Belgian midfielder from Stuttgart. I'm keeping my eyes on him, but he can't come in unless one goes out. And at the moment, that doesn't look to be the case unless... Arsenal, who are floating around Basuma, come in with a ridiculous offer. Spurs still looking at Lewis Dunk for potentially 60 million. Alzate transfer listed by request. And most importantly, if we go and have a look at the squad, there is one player who will not be going. And that man is Karim Adeyemi because he came to us requesting a new contract. We've agreed the deal in principle. 
I think he's about to sign it. It doesn't change much other than give him a pay rise to the joint top at the club and also give him a release clause of £115 million instead of 96, which is great for the club next year. So let's go and get through deadline day. If it goes my way, it'll be very quiet. Let's find out if it is. One hour in, big offers already. Steven Alzate is the first man. 17.25 million from Southampton. I can't turn that down. That's a really good offer for a player who wants to leave. Salzburg have offered 10.75. No chance are they getting in for that. But we will offer them the same negotiation. I think that's only fair. So we'll offer them him for 17 and a half. Not willing to take it yet. We'll keep negotiating and see what happens. Well, Salzburg have only offered 13. So we're going to reject that one. It's Southampton or nowhere for Alzate. Wouldn't even have to move house. Why would he say no? Back in a moment. See if the deal gets done. Well, our first offer out for the day. Let's see what our recruitment team is up to. Billy Reid is in for Fabio Cardozo, 28-year-old centre-half. I think we're all right back there, mate, to be honest. I'm going to say no to that one. They're trying to negotiate it anyway. We're going to reject that. Let's see what the rest of the day brings and whether Alzate leaves the club. Steven Alzate has agreed to leave, and we do owe him a little bit of gratitude because he came in and was versatile in important games last season. But for 17.25, he's off to Southampton. It's a good deal for the club. I've no idea what they paid for him, but it can't have been more than that. It was 100 grand. I mean, that's a fabulous deal. So let's keep skipping ahead. I'm not expecting much, but if one more midfielder goes, either Grass or Lalana, then we can bring in Mangala. We'll wait and see if it happens. Well, that was an incredibly quiet deadline day. All of the action at the start, the rest of the day a bit boring. And we couldn't force that other midfielder out the club. So with eight or nine going into those four positions already... I didn't feel I could go and bring in Mangala. What that means is Steven Alzate is the only change to the playing squad on the day. Wage expenditure for the division, we are the fifth lowest above the three promoted sides and Brentford. That's incredible for what we've achieved. Yes, we only finished mid-table in the league, and I know Adi Amy's going to add a bit to that now, but we'll still be 16th and we've got European football. We are building this club for the future. Despite that, we have had the busiest summer in terms of both ins and outs. 51 players leaving the club. We talked about how many pages there were last time out. But that is a very decent transfer window overall. And to get good money for him on deadline day, I think we have to take that, to be honest. A really good deal for Steven Alzate. And if we go back to the schedule to see when we're next going to be here... I think we've got to show a Napoli and a Rangers match in the Europa League. So we'll come back for Napoli at home and Everton away in the Premier League. They're separated by four days, so it might be all right for the first team squad. And then we'll come back for Arsenal and Rangers, the one after that. Because then if it is tense and goes to the final game, we can show Dnipro and Liverpool on camera. The last two games before the Winter World Cup. So if you're looking forward to that and you did enjoy that episode, doubting Adi Amy who gets a hat-trick and waving goodbye to Steven Alzate, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know in the comments what you think of our transfer window and of course of the Europa League group we've been drawn into. Arsenal in the third round of the Carabao Cup. We might not be going on a run in that one, but if you want to stay up to date and find out, then subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. Daily episodes from this series every weekday this week and next, and then FM23. You can see my save plans both here and on Twitch up in the eye above. That video was out last night, and of course we will be live with F1 Manager again on Twitch tomorrow morning. All of those links up there and to other platforms and ways to support the channel down in the description. But a massive thank you for watching. Sorry for the underwhelming deadline day, but the rest of the summer has certainly been blockbuster. We'll be back next time for Europa League action, but in the meantime, my FM23 plans are above my head now.